Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on uh, YouTube Medium and at danielrosal.tech. So we are continuing our exploration of the various ways one can back up a Linux host. In this case, a, it's an Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support desktop that, we're, uh, that you're looking at. Backing this up to our Synology uh, Network Attached Storage NAS. So this particular NAS I'm using here is the Synology DS920+. Plus. It's a four bay NAS that I received last week from Synology. And it's just really at the time of making these videos, making its way onto world markets. It's in Jap out, out in Japan and Australia and coming soon in the US and in, uh, and in Europe. Um, so basically, what, in terms of what I looked at so far, I've looked at GRSync, which is a, uh, you know, a graphical user, a, G a GUI, a front end on RSync. I've looked at Cloudberry, which takes takes things a little bit further and allows you to, to create schedules and backup plans. Uh, and coming next is going to be uh, Clonezilla, which is for creating those uh, those good disk images, the bare metal uh, copies. But uh, there's a lot you can do with RSync. RSync, and I've talked in previous videos, and anybody who knows backups uh, talks about a lot. Uh, both two things: one, the three, two, one backer principle of uh, three copies of all critical data, back, uh, primary data source and two backups, two different storage media and one of those needs to be off-site. So clearly what we're doing when we're working on an rsync backup over the local area network to an NES is we're just creating an on-site backup but the beauty of uh, the beauty of the Synology NES is that it has a delightful tool called CloudSync um, and that just can, can create a sync a bidirect it can be bidirectional it can be uh, local to remote or it can be remote to local uh, with a cloud storage device so I can basically run an rsync from this Linux desktop that we're talking about now and I'm able to then uh, push that up to the cloud and that'll give me my two backup copies one on the one one also on site and one off site up on the cloud so it's uh it's uh, Synology, you could say, is kind of a dream tool for people like me who take doing, uh, you know, local backup seriously. I'm not, I'm not backing up an entire uh, enterprise over here. I'm just backing up one Linux desktop. So it's not, we're not talking about petabytes of data. But for this, it's very effective. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of things before we get going. The first thing uh, to to note is that Synology. Uh, you really have to pay attention to the settings in this uh, DSM. DSM is the operating system that runs on the Synology, and uh, I did not have this backup uh, backup replication screen. But what I did have to do is uh, go in and open up uh, SSH on the uh, on the D on the NAS, and I has on port twenty two, and I also needed to um, add rsync. Additionally, I needed to manually add each user I wanted to have rsync access. Um, I had to manually add them into the rsync pool. So none of that stuff was, was kind of ready to go out of the box. So just to point out that if you've just got it and you're trying to SSH or rsync into the NAS and you're wondering why nothing is working, you're getting these error messages, that is why. So do that firstly. Secondly, when you're, when you're ready to actually get going on these things, um, now, I did say that I wanted to mention this uh, resource by Mark Sanborn. I don't know who he is. I'm saying, I'm saying his name as if I do. But he did put together this nice uh, document, Use RSync for Daily, Weekly, and Full Monthly Backups. Now, I've talked before about full backups, incremental backups, and differential backups. Full backups are what they say on the tin, backing up the full system. So when we're taking an RSync job, and the first time from our computer to our NES and we're backing up the whole, we're basically creating a full backup. Now, when you do a differential backup, you're uh, backing up only the difference, only the changes, um, only the changes between um, uh, when the initial full backup was run and when this backup is being run. And then we have incremental backups, which are the, the only things, the only only thing being backed up each time that runs is the delta, which means the change between the various incrementals. Now they have pros and cons, each of them, and from the point of restorability, really incrementals are what are used uh, nowadays, but um, the methodology that, uh, that uh, this blog describes is what I've just charted out here in this diagram, and it's showing how you can create a few 
snapshots. Now this replicates just by using the rsync CLI and setting up a couple of cron jobs. Um, what you are basically doing here is kind of replicating the functionality that TimeShift provides, and TimeShift is just a it's it's kind of the Linux equivalent of uh, of uh, back in time. I think that's what it's called. And there's a Mac equivalent as well. So creating a few rollback points. Now I'm just going to explain how this works because this blog does a nice job, um, and he adds a couple of important points actually here. So basically, um, one of them is that adding the delete flag. And if you notice the syntax, there's two tax two dashes. Um, after the initial variables and the variables I'm going to be using are actually not those I'm going to be using minus X uh, minus capital A and V V is very important to get verbosity um, path to source that's going to be and I've just created a I'm just going to do a couple of test files over here and then that now um, weekly sync is going to be he's creating a weekly snapshot is what I would call it um, to maintain our weekly incremental backup. Now what's going to change when you're using rsync? So on the first time that rsync runs, it's going to move over the whole system. And as I said, I think that's it's fair to call that a full backup. And the terminology uh, terminology is not you know 100% uh, that, but <laughs> effectively creating a full backup. It's going to create a file system. It won't be in the format of an archive. Um, but what what he is suggesting is basically running R syncs again, but running them on the NAS. So um, that can be done by going into the another. You have to open up the advanced features in order to get the ability to set cron jobs on the NAS. But you could run an R sync from daily to another folder that you can call weekly. And if you run that once a week, and just as when you ran the first R sync between the computer and the NAS. The first time that runs, you're going to create a full backup. Uh, it's going to this is going to be zero, and this is going to be full of your computer's files, and therefore it's going to move over everything at once. Um, but the beauty of rsync is that each time it runs, uh, it just creates, it just moves over the delta. So I don't think it's fair to call this an incremental backup strategy. In fact, because if you think about it, it I've just diagrammed out another snapshot point Th this would give you three and three three is nice if you're creating snapshots uh, but it does mean that you're gonna be if you think about it you're gonna be ending up with three times if this is you know 50 gigabytes you're gonna end up with uh, a 50 50 and 50 a 150 gigabyte 150 gigabytes of storage on the NAS backing up so three full backups so it's not actually an incremental backup strategy because what's being held <laughs> in these guys um, is not just the um, is not just the delta uh, it's actually the they're just behind copies so this is going to be a week behind daily and this is going to be a week, two weeks behind daily and how do you how do you set this up it would be pretty simple you would need you would need to create a cron job here w once a day executing rsync on the computer moving that to the NAS and then on the NAS you'd be creating two cron jobs one for a daily to weekly uh, uh, rsync push that would execute clearly once a week and the other one a uh, an, a daily to rsync push that would ex execute twice per month and that would give you your three backup points but those are each actually full backups as I said they're not incre they're not incremental or they're not differential it's just that when rsync runs uh, it just moves over the delta each time you don't replace you don't overwrite a full backup with a full backup so basically, the syntax is just important to know, and I've just uh, just jotted this out over here. Um, so this is the name of the volume I've created. Now, if you're running, if you're backing up the uh, the whole file system, you will need to run this with sudo elevated permissions. Uh, so I have put sudo in my command, even though for this demo, I'm not going to be using it, right? So sudo rsync uh, minus. I'm going to get rid of this uh, this upper a actually. Uh, tac tac delete uh, username this and now here's what I want to point out it's two colons then it's the volume name and then it's uh, then it's the path within that volume so I'm just going to put stuff on the root now if you do need a bit of help with the various uh, rsync parameters there is an extensive man page uh, which has all these so you can really look through and see exactly what everything is doing and I do not pretend to be an expert on rsync uh, but there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of uh, of options over there 
um, in order for you to just play around with. And you can of course do a dry run and whatnot with it too. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do over here is I've created this folder called rsync test and uh I'm just going to uh I guess I didn't need to just do that, but you know, basically just um I'm just gonna repeat the process over here. Create a couple of text files, file one, file one, uh two, let's just do three for the sake of it. I'm not doing this in a very smart way. So I just created three empty text files over here. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just simply run this command. So I've just popped that into my terminal and uh, of course after the parameters and before the destination. Now remember rsync is beautiful. It can be run remote to remote, remote to local, local to remote in both kind of ways. But um, the syntax, whatever you're saying, whatever, however you're going to doing, however you're going to be doing it is going to be source destination. So I didn't specify my source here. So my source is going to be um, and if you're wondering why I'm not using tilde, it's because I can never remember uh, where it, that where that is on my keyboard. Um, so there we go. Um, this should be good to go. And uh, as I said, we don't need we don't need sudo because this is just within our user directory. So just ask me for the password, which we will provide. And that's it. Um, it moved stuff in uh, in just a second because clearly we're just moving three. Uh, three text files which contain nothing. So let's just go into the NAS, do a refresh. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Um, it is Daniel Desktop rsync, and there we go. Our three files have populated. Now let's just go back into our terminal, and because we've added the uh, tac tac delete into the command, uh, it should uh, sync deletions. So now let's just delete file three and then run this guy again. Password again. Deleting file 3 has come up in the terminal output so it looks as if that's worked. Uh, sorry and let's just go back to the uh, DSM and let's do a refresh and we can, three that we can see that file 3 has been uh, nuked on the destination. So that's basically it. Uh, now in order to actually get from here from running our sync commands to uh, creating a system. There's various ways to do that, but one of them would be simply um, just building out a couple of folders on the destination, uh, setting up those cron jobs, uh, server side, and using server side with invisible uh, quotes because it's a local server, the NAS, but uh, that would be, and that would give you a few restore points uh, on the NAS that would be able to, you know, you could use that in order to, um, and what you would have to do if you did need to restore it would be to simply run the command uh, in the opposite direction that your source would be um, the the folder on the NAS and your destination would be would be you know the local file system and as I said in a in a full system backup we would clearly be running something uh, more we'd be running with uh, pseudo permissions ah pseudo permissions and uh, our source would be the root of the file system and that would be a full backup um, onto the destination. Thank you for watching um, and if you have any uh, queries or simply would like to get in touch my website is here at danielroso.co.al. Have a great day.